Thanks, William. Um, it's great to be here. Welcome, everybody, to, to the, this side event. That's already been described, so I won't repeat that in the interest of time. Um, um, it's really great to be here in a COP in an Amazon country, even if we technically are in the desert right now. But it's, it really uh, provides a new perspective on the efforts that we are all uh, going into. Um, the, along the efforts that lie behind this side event, I, I want to speak a little bit from CIFR's end of the spectrum. That, of course, CIFR has been involved in a, for a very long time since Red's inception seven years ago and always provided, this is long before my time, so I can't take all, much credit for it, but provided a lot of new insights at, at the COP meetings ever since. This year, we are focusing on two things. One is the subnational initiatives, which is pretty much uh, represented in, in this side event, and the other is safeguard information systems, which will be dealt with in sessions in the Global Landscapes Forum over the weekend. So on subnational initiatives, it really provides us with a whole new perspective on the red effort, and I, I think this is really, really interesting and useful. It really provides the conditions and the context on the ground that we are actually operating in, and it also provides the conditions and the context of the policy actions that we need to deploy. So this is really where the rubber is hitting the road. I'm, I'm really interested to hear from, from the panelists on, on, on their experiences here. And also, uh, of course, one of the backgrounds is the launch of uh, CIFOR's book this year. Um, it's good carbon storage. Um, it contains 23 case studies of subnational initiatives. It's, it's really interesting reading. It really provides a lot of insights. And of course, William will present much more in detail what this is all about. Um, in the introduction of this book, it says, among other things, that subnational initiatives are the laboratory in which the red experiment is being conducted. I think that's a very nice link to the science and research that needs to go underpin the, the, the red effort. And, and as, as William already said, is red going in the right direction? Um, there are some challenges, sure, but I think there is a great deal of reason for optimism as well. Clearly, the, the, the payment part and the money part of RED is, is uh, crucial. But I think the studies on subnational initiatives reveals a whole range of other um, uh, issues and, and outcomes that are necessary. So, so we, we're finding a much in, more interesting combination of issues. Um, clearly, the variation is great, as William mentioned already. We need to embrace that variation when we deploy RED in different parts of the world. So, I guess my main point here is that we need to see red in context to a much higher degree than perhaps we did initially. Red in context, meaning red in the context of realities on the ground, and embrace the variation and the complexities on the ground. And, and in my view, if I can do some marketing here, I think this comes pretty close to the ideas on the landscapes approach that we're going to debate over the weekend. It's really a lot of things going on on the ground, and red is one of them. I'm sure we can, I'm convinced that we can deliver on the red uh, priority within all these uh, priorities on, on the ground. But um, we need to figure out the synergies with other objectives, other priorities. It needs the wisdom that we will hear about in this side event from all the rest of the speakers. And um, I think that we can zoom out and put the red context in, F, in, in context, and that's really what this side event is all about, I think. Thank you very much, and welcome again.